What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Pygamer Python programming tutorial. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to clean a few things, kind of make a few small changes just to make the code a little bit better, in my opinion, and probably in your opinion, once we get to it. So, uh, you might have seen me blaze right ahead. In the player object, I'm just going to kind of shrink him down. He's a little bit too fat for my liking. I'm going to use a width of 32 and a height of, in this case, 48. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, gonna tighten up the set properties function. Gonna keep the self.speed variable. In fact, I'm gonna enhance that. I'm not gonna be using the change speed function too much anymore. I'm gonna get rid of that. Self.set position, I probably won't use that much at all again either. Um, right now, I'm just gonna comment that out. Because I might actually want that, because that, that actually deals with our origin. So yeah, that, that'll probably stay. Okay. The change speed, we don't have to worry about. We're going we're gonna to fix that up. Self.image. Um, setting images. Actually, I, I, I learned this later, and I actually should probably tell you it now before it's too late. Um, once you have loaded an image, it might be a good idea to go ahead and convert it. Dot, uh, you can use dot .convert afterwards. If, if you don't throw it into this, this nested linear version, you should use self.image is equal to what self.image already was, and then convert it. What this convert function does is it kind of does some Pygame preparation that gets it ready for alpha processing, I think. There, there is a convert alpha that you should look into, and that sort of thing. You can look at more information about this online in the, docu in the Pygame documentation, but for now... I just want to have this self.image equals pygame.image.load file name convert. Just a small change. Set properties, we're going to keep that just there. Actually, we're not even using this set image function for the rest of it, but okay. I, mean, I am going to delete it, but I wanted you to know that uh, you can use the convert function there. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of me talking for no reason. Okay, in the self.update function, i um, not going to make too many huge changes. I'm not going to actually include this comment anymore because I think we should be able to read it on our own. I'm going to open it up a little bit, however, and kind of tighten things around here. Okay, now in our handling for the control handling, each speed is actually... Okay, maybe I've already changed it. But yeah... I do not want to be using the um, self.changeSpeed function anymore. This might be different from your code that you might have, but self.changeSpeed should not be run. We're actually going to keep it to um, hSpeed can equal this negative self.speed. If you remember, the changeSpeed function was actually adding this new variable to what it already was, and I don't want to keep that functionality. I want to be able to immediately change direction no matter which way I'm going. Same thing happens with v-speed. We're actually jumping, so we're going to multiply that by 2, if you remember. And for the down key, since we have gravity, nothing of that is actually really happening. Um, for the up button, we're actually testing this sort of thing. We're actually testing if we're moving left or right, and in that case, that's when we would change. You might want to change to this in your code. Test whether h-speed is actually moving in the left direction, if it's less than 0, and then set it to equal 0. And the same thing happens for right. If h speed is greater than zero, which means we're moving in the right direction, then set h speed to zero. Up and down, nothing happens because we have gravity and because we have jumping, so we don't have to worry about that. The experience gravity function looks pretty okay to me, so uh, let's leave that just the way it is. The block function, we're not going to worry about the origin anymore. I'll actually remove that commented code. Keep the self dot rect, and uh, I suppose that's all I really need for now. Level looks good to me. Update looks pretty good to me. Other than that, I think everything looks pretty good. <laughs> I won't really be using the set message function anymore, though it is probably good to have. I am unfortunately going. I am unfortunately going to delete that. I don't know why I said that weird. It sounded like I, I had an accent there. Um, we can set the title. We don't. It doesn't have to be subscribe anymore. Uh, I'll just leave it. Whatever. 
multiply game, and it just wor works just fine for us. Active player list. Ooh, the set position function is being called here. Okay. I remember I wanted to have, actually, uh, a, a certain position for the player to start in each level. Let's go back to our, our level class, our level object over here, and let's actually set up some variables for self.playerStart. I'm going to set that equal to self.playerStartX. And, of course, self.player.startY. And I'm going to probably have to go a backslash into a new line here. Click and start at 0 by default. And 0 for Y by default as, as well. This backslash allows me to carry the code onto a new line. That might be a, a nice tactic for you to keep in mind. And, uh, yeah. I guess for now that works for us. We just have a player start object. And, let's see. Let's keep moving, I guess. If I wanted to have that set up with the player start, though, we're probably going to want to change something in the player object itself. Because we're using, we're actually telling the player's level to equal something when we um, have our main function. We set player level is equal to current level. But maybe we should have a function that actually sets the level and then sets the player's position to equal whatever the level's current place is. So I'm not going to have any specifically defined thing for level 0, 1, because it's going to, by default, inherit the player start from the default parent level object, but let's go to our player object and do exactly what I just said we were going to do. We do want to keep our set position function. And now let's create a new function called set level to self. Uh, what variable do we want to call this? We could probably just call it level. Yeah. Level is just fine. And then we'll go ahead and say self.level going to equal level, what we just passed in, and we'll use self.setPosition level.playerStartX and I'm sure you know level player dot start y. By default this is going to be zero, and let's go back to our main function, wait down at the bottom here, and rather than saying player.level is equal to current level, we will run player.setLevel for the current level works okay for us. And I'm trying to think if, there, if there's anything more we should change. Drawing works okay. Hmm. Actually, we should... I should probably just just so you understand how this player start works, uh, I will create a version of it in self-level.01. Because we've actually called the super function, everything is inherited, but I'll just put this player 10 pixels in, uh, in the x-coordinate, takes 10 pixels to the right. Clock and everything works just fine for us. We don't need to worry about any of this. Set message we don't need. Also, we probably won't need the font then, regardless. Running equals true, that can stay close by. Logic testing, nothing is in there yet. Let me update the screen and everything. I think we're good. Let's run this code and make sure everything works just fine. Okay, yep. And yeah, see? My player starts right over here. And uh, he's... A little bit smaller now, we can jump down to get to this block down here. Which works well for us. And I think... I didn't see my player move too far ahead. Let's, let's put him 100 pixels in. There we go. So now he automatically starts over this, this side over. Cool. That works just fine for us. So, there we go. Just some simple, small changes. Um, keeps it easy. And actually, you now have a specific position where the player will start once the level begins. And you can, you can modify that within each level. You can change it to be whatever you want. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. We're going to get into something cool in the next tutorial. And uh, you can be excited for that one. I'll see you soon.